In this video, we're using Terraform to create a Microsoft Azure virtual network in five minutes or less. Before we can begin, there's two bits of software we need installed on our system. We need Terraform and Azure-CLI installed. I'll include links in the description on how to download and install these. On my system, if I run Terraform version, you can see that I have Terraform 137 installed. Now, you don't need this version, but it helps because if you run into issues and you're on an older version, or if you're watching this from the future, a newer version, you may have issues because your version does not match mine. And for Azure CLI, if I run AZ version, we can see that for this video, I'm using version 2.44.1. To get started, the first thing we're gonna do is create a file and we're gonna name it versions.tf. And in this file, we're going to define which providers and which versions of those providers we want Terraform to use. So I'll head on over to the HashiCorp registry and I'll find the provider I wanna use, in my case, Azure RM, that's the Azure provider to connect to Microsoft Azure. I'll click use provider and I'll copy these contents. I'll take those contents I just copied and I'll paste them in the versions.tf. And now I've told Terraform, when we run this code, we require this provider and this version of it. So please install. Go ahead and under the Azure provider, remove this comment and replace it with the word features and two brackets. Now that I've created versions.tf and defined the providers, I'll go ahead and create a new file. And I'll name this new file vnet.tf. And in this file, I'm going to define all of the resources that I would like to create for my virtual network. I head back over to the HashiCorp registry to the Azure RM provider documentation, and I look for virtual network resources. At the time of this recording, HashiCorp provides you the ability to create the subnet within the Azure RM virtual network resource but it also provides you the ability to create that separately as its own resource, as an Azure RM subnet. Best practice is to always, 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 if you can, break your resources up, because if you have to make a change to the Azure RM subnet, it's easier to do so through the resource for the subnet than to do so through the resource for the entire virtual network. Go ahead and copy the example for the Azure RM subnet from the HashiCorp registry documentation. Paste that sample code into your vnet.tf. You'll see that even though we're creating a virtual network in this video, we have to create a resource group because everything in Azure has to belong, for the most part, to a resource group. You'll see that the code we've copied has three resources. We'll go ahead and create a resource group, a virtual network inside of the resource group that we create, and a subnet inside of that virtual network. Go ahead and modify the names of these resources to anything meaningful to you. I've gone ahead and I've renamed my resources to a meaningful name to me and I've also updated the location of my resource group to a region that I prefer. I'm going to go ahead and delete the delegation block from the subnet resource because it's not a required block. Go ahead and take one last look through the documentation to see if there's any of these attributes that are important to you or your organization when deploying a subnet or virtual network. And if there is, go ahead and add it to your code. For this video, we will not be adding any more attributes. Now that I've written the code to deploy my virtual network, I want to give people who use my code the ability to pass in their own virtual network name when using my code. To do that, I'll create another new file and I'll call it variables.tf. I'll create a variable and I'll call it virtual network name. I'll give this variable a type of string. I'll give this variable a default value in case nothing is provided of vnet name. I'll give this variable a description so people know what this variable does, the virtual network name. I'll go back to vnet.tf and I'll go ahead and change this from a hard-coded value to the variable virtual network name. Now we're ready to run our Terraform code, but first we have to tell Terraform how to authenticate with Microsoft Azure. Now normally, you could provide these details under the provider configuration. There are multiple ways to authenticate. One of the most common ways to authenticate and the way we will use during this video is to use the Azure CLI directly. We can do this by typing AZ login. This will pull up in our web browser the ability to sign into Microsoft Azure. Once we've signed in, we'll get some data back from Azure CLI that we've successfully authenticated. Now we're ready to run Terraform init to initialize Terraform download provider. Once Terraform init has completed, we'll run Terraform plan. If you agree with the plan Terraform has output for you, you can now run Terraform Apply. Once Terraform Apply is completed, go to the UI and verify your resources exist. And as you can see, mine do exist. 